Hi, Kiza SJ Chifefe. So in the name of the Almighty God, that I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to the Republic of Uganda, and that I shall preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution. So help me God. I, Kiza Pesidich Fefe, swear in the name of the Almighty God that I shall faithfully exercise the functions of the President of Uganda and shall uphold, preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution and observe the laws of Uganda, and that I shall promote the welfare of the people of Uganda. So help me God. The lords, the religious leaders who are here, the leaders of FDC, the leaders from Buganda government, and all of you ladies and gentlemen in your various distinguished capacities. What is happening today is not an ordinary swearing in ceremony. And this is because our country is in a rather unique and an enviable place of not running according to the constitution of the Republic of Uganda. This was occasioned by Mr. Museven and his regime trying to use force once again to overthrow the will of the people of Uganda. As I'm sure all of you know, Mr. Museven came to power not through an election, but through the force of arms. And since the 19th of February this year, he has been at it again, using the force of arms to overthrow the will of the people of Uganda. As you all know, I was arrested on the 19th of February together with the other party leaders, FDC party leaders, including the party president, Major General Mugisha Mundu, including the uh, chairperson, including the, um, all the members of our leadership while we were in a meeting at our party headquarters and from that day I stayed in incarceration in detention for 45 days our headquarters was being held by the police for more than three weeks occupied by the police. Various of our party offices across the whole country were similarly raided by the Uganda police. Many of our party materials confiscated and our party rendered ineffective. It will be recalled that uh, more than 300 of our party leaders and election agents were arrested at about the same time. This was all done in total violation of the law and in total violation of the Constitution. But the most grave violation that our country now suffers from and which has 
been the background to this swearing-in ceremony was the disabling of my right to petition the Supreme Court challenging the outcome of the 2016 elections. Every candidate has a clear, direct and specific right to challenge the outcome of an election. The election does not end with Mr. Chigundu, who was the electoral commissioner, announcing results. That is only a part of the process. Because what he announces, the Supreme Court can reverse. And if we had been given the opportunity, we have, even today, a lot of evidence, incontrovertible evidence, to ensure that, that shows that we won the election. So our country has been removed from the path of constitutional governance because the electoral process has been aborted. Once any of the duly nominated candidates has not had a chance provided by the Constitution to challenge the outcome of the election, then the election cannot be concluded. And this is what happened in this case. Therefore, unfortunately, we do not have a conclusively elected president according to the process of the 2016 election. What we have as a party, though, is conclusive evidence through the declaration forms that we received from polling stations signed by electoral commission officials and our representatives. And these are from a sufficient number of polling stations, of course, I've already talked about some of our materials being confiscated, some of our agents being arrested. But we have sufficient evidence to prove without any doubt whatsoever that we won the election with 52% of the vote. We therefore have an unfettered mandate from the people of Uganda to offer leadership for the next five years. Unfortunately, having offered a way back to the constitutional path through having an independent audit that we could present our evidence to and that whoever else was interested could present their information to and which could, in the circumstance, establish conclusively who won the election. A conclusion, we have, co we have clearly committed ourselves to abide with. That process and that offer has been regrettably neglected or ignored by uh, Mr. Museveni, who intends to cling on to what Mr. Chigundo announced that is untenable from the available evidence. Therefore, any swearing by Mr. Museveni is not a swearing by the Constitution of the Republic of Uganda because he has not won an election. And we have every evidence to show that we won the election. And that is why today we are being sworn in in front of the people of Uganda to offer leadership in the next five years. 
So, ladies and gentlemen, as I have pointed out throughout the campaign of this year, this challenge that we have had in not getting a conclusively elected president is not an out of step problem. It has been the problem of our country since independence. No leader has ever handed over power peacefully to another leader. Shamefully, regrettably, Mr. Museveni, who went to the bush to fight to end that, has been in power for 30 years. He has not seen it fit to respect the people of Uganda and bow out as demanded by them and hand over peacefully to the newly elected president. We hope and we pray that we shall have a resolution that brings finality to this process of not having handovers. Therefore, the administration we are setting up is going to be a transitional administration. We are going to set up a government of national unity as we promised in our manifesto. Consultations are advanced on the constitution of the new government. We shall welcome even persons from the NRM who are willing and able to join our government to show interest. And we shall definitely consider them in accordance with the requirements of the new government. This transitional government shall not serve the entire five years. We would like to do it by correcting all the mistakes that have been made, which have led to this unfortunate situation whereby there is no formal handover. And therefore our preoccupation is first and foremost to ensure that we rebuild state institutions, all state institutions, to be people's institutions. To regain integrity, to be independent, and to be able to serve the people of Uganda without any favor. So that is going to be a primary focus of our government. We must have an independent electoral commission that manages the next election that is agreed upon by all stakeholders in the political arena, not a walking stick of the incumbent. We are going to bring back integrity to our courts. We are going to ensure that we have a sound financial institution that cannot be freely raided by political leaders. Having done that, we will, even within this short period, focus our attention on transforming the lives of our people, our people's lives, are in total despair. We must quickly transform the economy so that it serves all our people, that our people can again get into work, be gainfully employed, that we can revamp the education system, that we have quality education that serves all and that is relevant to our economy, we must quickly revamp the healthcare system which has totally collapsed 
so that our people can once again access quality health care, we must urgently attend to the infrastructure of this country, which over the last 30 years has gone into total decay. Our roads, the rail network, the waterways, the electricity, which is now completely unaffordable by citizens. We have a lot of work to do, ladies and gentlemen, but we are prepared for it. We are determined to do it, do it quickly, do it efficiently, and to make our country a country <coughs> all citizens will be happy to live in, indeed, a country which, as I promised throughout the campaign, all citizens can walk with a swagger. <laughs> Let me, therefore, take this opportunity to thank the people of Uganda who have remained steadfast in their support for change, a change that they deserve, a change from a country controlled and robbed and uh, mismanaged by a few people to a country that is democratically governed. The people of Uganda have invested a lot. Many of our people have suffered, made immense sacrifices. To all of you, I say thank you. I would like especially at this moment to thank the men and women who serve in our forces, in the UPDF, in the Uganda police, the Uganda prisons, and in the other security services. Because different from what has happened at any time before, in the last election, they all turned up to strongly vote for change. And therefore, I would like to assure our men in uniform, our men and women in uniform, that this is going to be their government. A government that develops the forces on a clearly nationalistic and professional line, where there will be no favoritism, where you are promoted on merit, where you undertake training that you, are, you, 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 you deserve and that is due to you. We are going to have a professional force, whether in the military, whether in the police, whether in the prisons, or anywhere else. This is my solemn promise to you. I would also like to thank the international community, which have been working and standing with the people of Uganda all these years. Indeed, when our state collapsed, most of our citizens have survived thanks to the contribution of taxpayers abroad, taxpayers of other countries, taxpayers that pay our medical bills, that afford our people some treatment, taxpayers abroad that contribute to the development of our agriculture and the other sectors. But more importantly, I would like to thank the international community for this time standing with the people of Uganda in declaring the Museveni election a sham. And demanding that there should be a democratic election in this country. Yes, would like to commit to continuing working with all our development partners 
in all the spheres of our common interests. In international peace, in ensuring international peace and security. In ensuring uh, development, human development, both in Uganda and in the region. We, you will not find us wanting partners in ensuring that our common interests are promoted. So, ladies and gentlemen, as I have pointed out, this is a, a unique moment, but it's a momentous occasion to renew our country. I call upon all of you, ladies and gentlemen, our citizens, to rededicate yourselves. The struggle is not over, but it's about to get to where we need it to reach. So be firm, be confident, this is our country. We don't have any other country. We shall make Uganda work for all of us. I thank you. One Uganda, one people.